All right, so here we are with template refs. While Vue's declarative rendering model abstracts away most of the direct DOM operations for you, there may still be cases where we need direct access to the underlying DOM elements. To achieve this, we can use the special ref attribute. We, have, we assign a ref to, a, to an element Ref is a special attribute, similar to the key attribute discussed in the v4 chapter. It allows us to obtain a direct reference to a specific DOM element or child component instance after it's mounted. This may be useful when you want to, for example, programmatically focus an input on component mount or initialize a third-party library on an element. For example, some, uh, some JavaScript map libraries, you just run a, ja a bunch of JavaScript unmounted and you that appends something to an element or replaces an element and then you need to provide a reference to the element where you want your map to be put in, for example. Accessing the refs. To obtain the reference with Composition API, we need to declare a ref with the same name. So we have, okay, so first of all, that's the template. We have a input with ref, which equals input. And then we have our stuff here, and then we declare an input as a ref with value null. Declare a ref to hold the element reference. The name must match template ref value. So you declare a ref null where whose value, whose name must match this all right if not using script setup make sure to also return the ref from setup sure note that you can only access the ref after the component is mounted obviously if you try to access input in a template expression it will be null on the first render this is because the element doesn't exist until after the first render. If you are trying to watch the changes of a template ref, make sure to account for the case where the ref has null value. Okay, so if we have, if we have a watch effect, we have an input ref. If the input has a value, then focus else mean would mean it's null practically speaking in this case, so do nothing. Or it could be unmounted because maybe we hide it with v if. Refs inside v4 requires view 3.2.25 or above. When ref is used inside v4, the corresponding ref should contain an array value which will be populated with the elements after mount. All right, so we have a v4 here. We have a ref, which has a value item refs, and it's telling us the initial value of these refs should be an, an empty array. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Here, well, we see some alert. We'll take a look at it later. We have a script and a template. In the template, we have a loop with items refs. The item refs has uh, an empty array as initial value, and the unmounted shows an alert with the text content of the item refs, which in this case is one, two, three. And this is what it shows. Okay, so that's to show item refs is an array here. The value of the item refs is an array whose elements are the DOM elements of, are these DOM elements basically. All right, clear. Clear. Very cool. I didn't know this, very cool. So let's make a little note. Ref can be used with v4. 
then its initial value should be ref uh, with an empty array. It should be noted that the ref array does not guarantee the same order as the source array. Okay. Mm, I don't know why, but sure. Function refs. Instead of a string key, the ref attribute can also be bound to a function, which will be called on each component update and gives you full flexibility on where to store the element reference. The function receives the element reference as the first argument. So for the ref, we can use a function. That's the DOM element, and then we can assign it to whatever we want. That's very interesting. Note we are using a dynamic ref binding, so we can pass it a function instead of a ref name string. When the element is unmounted, the argument will be null. You can, of course, use a method instead of an inline function. That's interesting, so I'll make a copy of this. Refs can take functions. Ref on component. This section assumes, sure, ref can also be used on a child component. In this case, the reference will be that of a component instance. So we have a component with a ref, which is child, and then this child is declared here. And the value of the child will be uh, an instance of child. That makes sense. If the child component is using options API or not using script setup, the reference instance will be identical to the child component's this, which means the parent component will have full access to every property and method of the child component. This makes it easy to create tightly coupled implementation details between the parent and the child, so component refs should be only used when absolutely needed. In most cases, you should try to implement parent-child interactions using the standard props and emit interfaces first. So it's telling us this is kind of an anti-pattern. An exception here is that components using script setup are private by default. All right, a parent component referencing a child component using script setup won't be able to access anything unless the child component chooses to expose a public interface using the define expose macro. Interesting. I'm not sure now what could be a use case for this, but all right. I like it. I like private things. When a parent gets an instance of this component by a, pri by a template refs, the retrieved instance will be of the shape AB. Refs are automatically unwrapped, just like on normal instances. All right. So next component basics, and that's going to be the last part of the essentials.